Just a quick tutorial today, I want to take an object and calculate its volume, so let's do it. Here we have a Suzanne, and I want to know what the default volume of it is. One way to do that, and here's how we're going to approximate it, is we are going to remesh using blocks, so we're getting kind of like a voxel representation, and basically the more detailed this is, you can see it better approximates the mesh, and this is something that's actually easy to calculate the volume for, because we know that a cube, if I can draw one here, is equal to length times width times height, which we can add the uh, number of voxels of. So in geometry nodes, we need to create that voxelization. To do this, we need some volumetric, so we're going to mesh to volume. I'm going to up the density really high so that we got the entirety of this. Distribute points inside of volume. You can see it makes a whole bunch of points that are chaotic, but I want them in a nice grid. Set it to grid, and you can think of each one of these points as representing a cube of a certain volume. And since I want that to be uniform, I'm going to pick a single number and connect that to all the spacing. So you can see as this number increases, it gets less accurate, and vice versa for decreasing it. Each one of these points again represents a cube of spacing or length within height of 0.1 times 0.1 times 0.1, which is the volume of this individual voxel, and then I'll we have to do is multiply it by the number of voxels. Well, to calculate how many voxels there are, that's super simple. We can use an attribute statistic. And for each voxel, I just want to add a unit of one, such that the sum of this is basically saying it's one times the number of voxels. And I want to take this sum and multiply by the volume of each individual one. So it's not going to be 0.1, because that's just the length or width or height, but it's going to be that to the power of three. So let's kind of minimize this. I take these, I multiply them together, and this will strictly give us the volume, which I can express as a string. Here you can see the number that is representing the volume. I'm going to bring that over to the side, merge that with our original, and there you go, the volume of a Suzanne is 2.2. If I take this and increase it, you can see the volume goes up, so if I scale it by factor of 2, you can see it gets kind of close to 16, which makes sense, because when we scale by 2, we're doing so on the length, width, and height, which means as a, a power of 3, we're increasing by 8. You can basically do this, it's going to add volume, if I go inwards, it's going to subtract volume, and we can do all kinds of things with this. For example, I can distort the mesh offset with a noise texture, and this is what I want to plug into our volume function, so you can see as this changes, so too does the volume staying very close to 2.2. And you can see the volume isn't a constant, but what if I want this deformation, but it maintains the volume? Well, to do that, all I need to do is scale the monkey itself. So we know that we want this to be 2.2, but it's 1.7, meaning I can take the original value and then divide by 1.7, which is going to be a number strictly bigger than 1. But remember, this is kind of a cubic volumetric function. So really, I'm going to take this value and take a cubic root that tells me how much to scale by. In other words, I take our volume and divide it by the original, which was roughly 2.2. Yeah, and we got to take a cubic root, so to the power of one third, and then let's scale this up by that, and you can see it gets slightly bigger, which makes sense. How do we check if this works? Well, we need to use our volume function. Remember, all of this with this mesh to volume, etc., calculates uh, the volume. So I'm going to take this, control G to make it a node group. I'll call this volume calculator. I'm going to calculate the volume just like that, and let's display that using the value to string. It hovers around 2.2, no matter how badly I deform this. Even if I take this thing and scale it by like five, so a crazy deformation, you can see it's going to try its best to stay around 2.2 except for like degenerate cases, and this becomes more and more accurate depending on our uh, spacing. So if I take this and divide it by three, it's going to make a much closer approximation that hovers around 2.2. This is something that the maintain volume constraint doesn't really handle. Really, it's all it's made for is stretching and squashing. So there you go. Maintain volume, calculate volume. Just a quick one.